morning. Good morning on this beautiful Friday morning here on the North Coast. It is just a lovely mild winter's day and uh, feeling happy to be having the weekend coming up. I'm just going to be um, bringing Jenny in. And so I'll just be a moment while we get organized with that. Here we go, promoting to panelists. And morning to everybody that's joining us today. It's lovely to see you. Hey, Jenny, how are you going? I'm really well. How are you today? Nice to see you. Happy great, Friday. Great to see you too and happy Friday. How's it, how's it going up there in Brisbane? Are you on the verge of another lockdown? We are. Oh, I think we might be. We uh, had a couple of cases this week, so we're back to masks for one more week until the next Friday at least. Um, but you know we're uh, we're in the southeast Queensland kind of space where we can't really travel. We we don't have the same restrictions as Sydney, thank goodness. Though, and uh, ten kilometres from your home piece, it's just wearing masks and be safe. Hold on. Well, uh, if you're ready, I will um, click on go live on our custom streaming awesome. service. And good morning, everyone who's here, who's watching us today. We have some new people. Nice to see you guys. Yay, very nice to see you. So welcome to Bite Size Conversations, everybody, where Jenny Walk and I talk about uh, things to do with business stuff. What does it say on our promo? Random, random conversations. <laughs> random conversations. Random conversations, thoughts. I think that's what we do, yeah. Yes, yeah, so uh, let's talk about our topic today, Jenny. I'm excited. We're talking about abundance, abundance mindsets and, and scarcity. I, I love this conversation because it's really about how do we focus on, you know, building and, and growing and what we can have rather than what we don't have. Yeah, we, Jenny and I were talking about a, a topic for today and <clears throat> because of lockdowns, because of, you know, a lot of uncertainty around what's going on for people. Um, and of course, everyone's tired of it. It's been well over a year now. And, you know, it's just, dare I say it, got a little boring. And the reality is we're just so lucky here in Australia with how we've gone. But it's just, it's, you know, it's definitely wearing thin. So what I'm noticing and with my own coaching groups and things, and I know, you know, we've talked about this a fair bit, Jenny, is that keeping keeping on track with your own mind is just so incredibly important. So important. And um, so rather than looking at the doom and gloom, we were wanting to talk about some of the things that you can do to turn that around and change it and, and look at what you can do while you're in lockdown to improve your business. And even, even when lockdown's not on, just what you can do in downtime to, um, to really invest in, in your everything. So uh, I've been reading a book this week called Effortless by um, Greg McEwen. I don't know if you know it. He wrote the book called Essentialism several years ago, which is which essentially is around like looking, focusing on the big rocks and identifying the big rocks in your life and, and making sure that you have that kind of, you're focusing on the right things. And Effortless is the follow-up book that says what happens if you have too many big rocks and you still need to try and manage and you're feeling overwhelmed, essentially. But he has this beautiful quote that I thought was so apt for today. And it says, if you focus on what you have, you gain what you lack. If you focus on what you lack, you lose what you have. Can you can you say that again? I love it. So if you focus on what you have, you gain what you lack. But if you focus on what you lack, you lose what you have. So that idea that if you just focus on what you don't have and you're always looking at the, the, the negative and what you don't have and what you can't get, then you actually lose connection with the amazing things that you do have and the amazing things in your life. But when we focus on the positive things and, and what we have access to and what we are doing and the connections we do have and how we are working in our business and the amazing clients we're getting, what happens is it actually attracts more of those things. It, it, it actually, what fills the gap is, you know, your focus on the positive and it's that abundance mindset. When we focus on the positive and the things that we have, we actually end up filling those little gaps without us even realizing that we're doing it. Such a powerful one, Jenny. I just loved it. And it just made me think about the one that I love of Tony Robbins, which is like four words or something, six words, I don't know, <laughs> where focus goes, energy flows. Yes. Which is such a powerful one as well. And it's like, yeah, if we focus on the negative, of course, everything around us is going to be negative. It's going to be hard if we actually look for the lights and, and where we can go with it. It's, it'll definitely change everything. 
know, I mean, you and I've talked about this a lot since we uh, since we met because we met just before the sort of COVID hit. And so for us, we were always talking about the positive things in our business and what we're doing to grow it, and what and we and we rarely we rarely talk about the things that we don't have. You and I very rarely talk about clients that we don't have, or I wish we had this, or and it's always about the positive and looking forward and how we're growing and learning. And I think that's maybe why you and I are you know, attracted with each other in terms of the way that we approach business and our similar mindset is that when we do have that positive approach and say, well, what can we do to pivot? What can we do to make this situation work for us instead of focusing on, oh my gosh, this situation is terrible. Look what it's taking away from me. And you did that beautifully with COVID last year when you recognize I can't see my clients that I had been always seeing face to face and how much you loved it. And you recognize that not only would your productivity increase, but your business can thrive by simply pivoting your business online and delivering your digital coaching or your digital marketing coaching via an online platform, which fits your brand and fits what you're trying to teach anybody anyway. But it's funny that it took COVID for us to have that realization. Absolutely. That's so true. And I'll be honest, I way prefer it online. <laughs> I'd way prefer. Like you, I have to say, I'm actually starting to feel a little bit more like, oh, okay. Um, I, I like this Zoom because you do get more productivity. You do get more time to think and wonder. And I've been on back-to-back -back meetings with, with clients and workshops. And the one hour in between that used to be travel, I now either can listen to a podcast, open Clubhouse for the occasional time I get to re listen to it go through and you know write a blog or write some write some emails but I'm it's actually such productive time now instead of just being that one hour driving where really the only thing you could do is listen to a podcast you really couldn't focus on talking to a client or doing a coaching session or even doing any administration because you're driving yeah absolutely I taught a three-hour workshop yesterday got off the workshop made myself or filled up my water or something and then jumped into two consecutive meetings boom boom and then I was I was finished work at 5 30 just like that and walked back into my house it felt amazing yet had I done like two years ago even or 18 months ago one at one workshop and then had two meetings that's my whole day gone yeah. but not so, only all day you're, you're you're exhausted and you're tired and you come back going oh my gosh it was so I was drained and, and, it, and it just reminds me of another quote that Greg talks about in his book that says, only do enough each day that you can recover from each day. And yeah. that's like resonating with me because you and I have talked about how much we used to shove into our day and how much we wanted our day to be full. So we felt like we were productive. But in actual fact, you and I both realizing the more we filled our day, in some respects, the less productive we kind of ended up being because we were taking days to recover sometimes from that, or at least I was. And so I love that idea of when we're looking at what we have, it's not about you know trying to get more. It's not about actually having more in your life. It's about using the time well and effectively so that we can have a full life. And to me, that's what abundance is. That abundant, abundance mindset is having a full rounded life, not just having it all, not just having everything. It's having balance and and freedom and and the feeling of flow and all those things that we want without feeling overwhelmed. Jenny, that's made me think we uh, the perfect topic for next week. When is enough enough? And <laughs> that doesn't mean about stopping the business or whatever, but yeah. stopping something. Like it's even in terms of a, of a graphics that you're creating. When do you actually stop and go? I don't need to put more time into that or a project. Yeah, don't we? Don't we? <laughs> Yes. Shall we have that for our topic next week? We should. Next I can week. definitely have that topic for next week. enough, enough. Okay. Lend itself to the scarcity conversation because often that scarcity mindset comes from the fact that if I'm looking at the negative, I have to overfill my cup because I need to take it while I can. It's that kind of, you know, um, feast and famine. I have to have as much as I can right now because I may not have it in the future. So often we think of scarcity mindset as, as a feeling of lack. But actually, it comes down to it's that idea of that I, I may not get it in the future, so I have to pull or, or hustle or do what I need to to get it now. And actually, what you're doing is creating this cycle of kind of ups and downs and, this, and that doesn't actually work in the long term. It just gives you this, you know, immediate high and then almost, you know, desperation because you're like, I don't have it. I need to find it. Whereas we change the mindset to be what we have is, you know, we have everything we need to do what we need to do. And we can find other connections with people, learn it, or get support when we don't. And, you know, the pie is big enough, the world is big enough, the space is big enough for everybody to play together in. So if we have that kind of, it'll be okay attitude, 
it actually creates that abundance and that fullness and that positive energy of like, okay, we can do this. Yes, absolutely. I was having a couple of sessions over the last few weeks with my uh, <clears throat> results coach, I guess, for that's probably my favorite word for him. And um, we were looking at my growth and all that kind of stuff. And it was, to be honest, completely phenomenal. I was like, whoa, that's been a good last financial year. Yay. But, you know, interestingly enough, straight away, my mind, giving it any, um, any, any conscious thought, my mind straight away went to, oh, I probably couldn't do that again, though. And then I went, for goodness sakes, Kylie, you just had an amazing year. The year before that was amazing. There's just been growth after growth after growth because, of course, as you know, we believe really heavily in investing in ourselves so that we can grow. And so it's like, of course I could do it again. So I set myself a new target and then, you know, pull my pants up and off I go, my socks up. (laughs) Pull my socks up and uh, off I go, ready to tackle my next um, hill mountain whatever you want to call it but it was fascinating to me where my brain instantly went of oh I won't be able to do that it's like oh for goodness sake so how powerful is that that negative thought or that negative burden on our shoulder it's so powerful and I think we and, and as you said it becomes an unconscious piece I was talking to a client this morning about the program that she offers and we were talking in the fact that the very first thing that we do is we have to bring conscious awareness to our thought patterns and we actually need to not just recognize that we do it also know that we do it but actually recognize when we do it and that moment where you say actually that's an old belief that's an old story that I don't have anymore and you know you and I aren't aren't always into the mindset piece but this is the one bit I think you and I agree on is this abundance mindset of catching ourselves when our language belies our actual intention or desire or ability is really important and just having that affirmation to say no you know, that's okay. I'm, of course I'm going to do it again because I've just done it for two years. And of course I'm going to do it again because I've got great people around me. And of course I'm, I can do it or I will have because, again, that energy that we're creating is about positivity and moving forward, not what we don't have. Absolutely. So let's look at what we can do while we're sitting back, whether we're in lockdown, whether we're, you know, just taking time to think about where we're headed, etc. I've been th- thinking about this a lot and, and sharing it a lot with clients and stuff. So, well, not stuff, clients aren't stuff, but clients and other people. So my belief is, as you know, we've talked about this before, obviously you've got to get visible, but also start with a blog post. So when you're sitting there and you've got time on your hands and you're trying to figure out how am I going to get more sales? How am I going to get more bookings? How am I going to get anything of the, of the stuff that I need to actually make my business feasible or to make it grow? So start with the blog post. Sit back, start about writing things that you know. Write some topics down of the, of the ones that you want to cover. <clears throat> Excuse me. Start working on your website. As soon as you put that blog post out there, that's fresh content. Make sure that you've woven your keywords through it and then start putting it out on socials, et cetera. Then do some lives, put some stuff out there going, hi, you know, I'm in lockdown. How's things going for you? You know, actually be a real human and be authentic. How's it going? But without the negative stuff and just talking about what you do, how you help people, et cetera, et cetera. A, it's helping you get visible. B, it's helping everything else behind the scenes to then further forward, um, move your business forward. What about you, Jenny? What do you think is a good approach? I think from a from a visibility and a marketing perspective, that's a really great idea. And we love your approach of, you know, your blog post is the jumping off point for all your digital marketing for the week or your conversations for that week. And it's such a really great tool and simple tool. And remembering that a blog doesn't have to be a thousand words. It can be 250 words. It can be a great gift. <laughs> and right? Thinking about things differently. Um, I think it leads into my point about, I think, look at your business differently. I actually think reflecting on how, how things are going really well and look at what is the one thing that you can do that's working really well that you can keep doing despite everything else. Because at the end of the day, you're with, with lockdown or with COVID, your clients aren't hiding anymore. They're not running away like they did in last March and you know, digging in going, oh my gosh, I'm not sure what's going to happen. The world is ending. I think Chicken Little you know, has left the building in that respect. And it's now about saying, you know, what can I do? What am I doing really well at the moment? And how do I keep doing that? So from a purely process or structure perspective, if you're delivering clients face-to-face and you go, well, how do I keep delivering the service? Don't think about the methodology. And I had this conversation this morning when we were talking about the structure of a program being developed. 
And it was always about, well, is this 90 minutes or is this a half day? And I was like, actually, let's just step away from how it's going to be delivered. Don't worry about what it looks like. What are you trying to deliver? What's the intention that you're delivering? So if you're a coach, as you did, how do I still deliver amazing coaching sessions in a COVID environment? And what that does for you, it sparks new ways and innovative ways for you to think about how you can continue to live your business. So it's not what you don't do or what we can't have. It's how can I make this better? How can I continue to deliver what I'm doing in this way? Let's face it, we're so used to Zoom. But back in the day, coaching conversations were done by telephone. There was no video. It was literally just pick up the phone and have a one hour or so coaching call and you never actually got to see the person. So we forget how far we've come. That even if you've got terrible bandwidth, your internet drops down, you can still run a coaching call over the phone without Zoom. You can still run a coaching call without having to be in the same room. You can still deliver your product without having to have a physical shop. There are so many ways that we can continue to do what we're doing really well. And I think what COVID gives us the opportunity to do or any, any situation where the world is changing gives us an opportunity to say, how do we continue to do this for our clients just in a different way? I, I totally agree. I can't love what you just said more. Absolutely, 100%. And also to remember, with not with us, with our business, but about what's happening with everyone else, they're more spending more time online than they ever have before. Exactly. So you've actually got more opportunity to reach more people than you've ever had before. They're not wandering the streets at the shopping mall or, you know, in the shopping mall. They're not out there at um, bouncing whatever trampoline indoor things with their kids, like whatever it is, they're not doing it. They're at home and they're online. So rather than sit back and go, Oh, no one's, spending no one's this no one's this yes they are they just are spending more online so and they're, just, wow. and they're just spending differently so they have yeah. the same questions i've still got the same money i've still got my disposable income in some respects even if the disposable income has dropped down a little bit they still want to spend time with their families they still want to spend money on things and it's just a matter about putting your solution in front of them so that they know how to do that what that looks like and I think that comes down to that conversation about saying, understanding who your market is, recognizing that we don't have to serve everybody. And again, I had this conversation this week with a client who's, you know, saying, I need to, you know, my website needs to look at this. And what happens if a 50 year old woman comes to my site and I've got images of 20 year old women or vice versa. And I said, well, who's your website for? Because you cannot have images unless you're going to have a bank of images that cover every single demographic and every single person. And then it speaks to no one. And you and I have this conversation and you do this with your clients. But so for her, it was like, oh, that's right. I only want to talk to this group. Other people will still resonate. But being really clear about who your market is and who you're talking to is why I think this period of time is really valuable for everybody because it's making us take stock of how we're communicating because we've been you know lucky in some respects that if you do have a physical shop or you do have face-to-face -face coaching then in those days you had a lot more kind of people saw you out and about and there was a lot more kind of live visibility we, it's different now it's far more targeted people are looking for something that resonates with them so they can have that buy it and move on because there's too many other things to worry about right so <laughs> yeah. I think Clarity around who you're, who, you're messy, who you're serving is really important. And it's a time that, you know, we should do that all the time. But particularly now, as the world keeps changing, ask yourself, am I still serving the right people? Do I still want to serve those people? And if I do, then how am I communicating with them effectively? Absolutely. Where are they hanging out? Are they hanging out on Facebook? Are they on Instagram? Are they on TikTok? I've got an amazing new client who had a um, previous advisor tell them, you must be on TikTok. And I was like, whoa, hang on a second. Let's look at your demographic. Your demographic aren't even anywhere near TikTok. So that's their belief, but that's not actually the truth. We so, TikTok, yeah, <laughs> well, not me. <laughs> Not me, but then not my demographic out on TikTok. So I don't need to suck it up and get on there and go, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, that's a bit kind of, I think that's a really, really valuable point because at the moment, even though things, when things are pivoting, we start to feel this kind of overwhelm and uncertainty to think maybe we need to be everywhere. Maybe because I, I don't have the same methodology of delivery or because the world is changing, I now need to be on every platform and be able to be seen by everybody. But the reality is, as you just said, 
if I'm not supposed to be, if my clients aren't there, no matter how much I might love TikTok, if my clients aren't hanging out there, I either need to one change my clients or be change where I where I where I hang out because That's- I need to hang out where they're hanging out, not the vice versa. You don't want that. They're not going to come and follow you in most cases unless you're, you know, maybe Ryan Reynolds or Hugh Jackman, and then they might follow you there, right? <laughs> but unless you've got like that level of notoriety and and you know and um what be, be so well known your clients aren't going to find you in a random location you have to be where they are <laughs> you forget that sometimes that is so true isn't it i just love that <laughs> and uh thinking about so for example if i did like tiktok and i did want to hang out on tiktok but my clients aren't there and the and the clients that i'm wanting to reach aren't there then that's okay i can just do tiktok in my own time yes. just not where i invest my business time into very much so. I think the, the important one to remember, for example, I, I um, really enjoy a bit of um, Facebook, obviously, you know, for, for obvious reasons. I enjoy Facebook groups, et cetera. But my business also enjoys it. So it's really important to me to schedule business time for Facebook and then yeah. my personal time for Facebook too. Yeah, very true. But I think, it, and that comes back to that abundance and scarcity, kind of how we're, folk, how we're showing up, is that just like it was when there's not a pandemic or when there's not crisis in the world, we have to look after you know both sides of the coin. So our personal business and our, and our business business, whether you're in business or working for someone else or a career person who's working in a company, it's about saying, well, how do I balance what my personal business is and what my business business is? And how do I maintain that balance between the two? Because it's easy, particularly as you and I, you know, you and I've had this gone through this journey ourselves as we move all online. If you're sitting at your computer all day, it's sometimes you forget that, hang on, I've got to take some time out for me because I can run clients 15 hours a day if I want to. I could be at my desk from six o'clock till seven o'clock or 10 o'clock at night and I could fill my day. But then you actually take away from your own personal business and your family time and your and the regeneration that you need and the recouping that you need in order to sustain that over time. So I think yeah. abundance is about, yes, building energy and, and, and putting your energy where, you know, in a positive way, but it's also about balance. And this comes back to that enough thing, which we'll talk about next week about, you know, just having doesn't mean that it's adding value to your life. It has to have, a, it has yeah. to be balanced. So using your time cleverly and smartly, I don't think that's even a word, but, you know, I, I talked last week about your do first model. And I could not remember the bottom two, but um, but except no, that's not true. I remembered one, two, three, but then sorry, one, two, not three, but then four. And the four, I believe, was if you've put it all in there, but then you're not actually ever getting it done, just wipe it off because it doesn't even need to happen. If it's, if you're just going to keep adding it a day after day after day after day, never never doing it. But I really love that do first and then need to do it, but it's not. Can you explain that one again? Of how that works i think it's so helpful for all of us yeah well and it's a really good way to actually be abundant in the way that you deliver your work so set your write your list of all your 55 things you think you need to do today and then block them in the first one is do first so the stuff that's urgent and important that needs to be done in whatever time frame you set aside one day or one week the next piece is the schedule so basically Uh, put it in a diary schedule a time for it and pop it somewhere so it's out of your brain but you know that when it pops up in your diary you'll see it and get it done so the top two are about things that you have to do the bottom two is about stuff other people do so the third one is delegate so stuff that you don't need to do yourself but still important to the business delegate it to either outsourcing to one of your staff or even to an external service provider if you if you can so that might be cleaning your house it could be um doing your social media it could be you know lowering your mowing your lawns so looking at the things that are impacting your day-to-day activities that you don't actually need to do so delegate it the fourth one discard so that's the stuff that you think you need to do but you don't really need to do that's not adding value to either your personal life or your business life so bearing in mind that these you know when you look at that matrix you want to consider both personal and business life because that's who we are. We don't show up and cut ourselves off and be like, I'm just business or I'm just pleasure. You need to actually combine that and recognize that they all sit around your brain. So we dump them out, we put them on a piece of paper, we organize them. And then actually our brain knows that we have capacity to do the work. So what it does is actually helps your brain go, wow, I'm free. I've got space in my head to think and wonder and grow the business and have those amazing conversations and learn new things because all my stuff is organized and I'm able to do it. 
So that's the, that's the value that it actually breeds an abundance mindset because it's giving you freedom, freedom from overwhelm, but also freedom to think about new ways of working. Gosh, I love it so much, Jenny. And I was thinking while you're talking, can you make an app of that? I know. I was actually thinking, talking to someone recently about it. How good would it be to have a little app that comes up and it's like, this is what we do every day. I know yes. it's such, I'm going to, maybe I need to do that. Maybe that will be this. But an app that we can get the whole team working with and on the same, the same model, because I was even just thinking, crikey, we really need to do the do first model with every team meeting because I can get carried away on a tangent. And then we get to the end of our meeting because I've got something else scheduled. And I'm like, Ooh, we haven't covered that. I know my team are listening going, uh-huh, uh-huh. It's a thing. It's such a thing. So we need to go, right, here's our do first model. What are we going to cover today? What's da, 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 And then the rest we'll just discard. I love that word, discard. Well, I actually talked to a client. I talked to a client yesterday, a beautiful guy who uh, runs a small business. And he's saying, you know, he, he likes to organize. And he had his schedule up of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And you could see that he pretty much only ever written up two days of the week and never kind of got, by the end of the week, you forget what you need to write each day. So we, we, we're going to trial with him. He puts a big piece of butcher's paper up every morning. He sits with his team and they do the do first. They dump their brain about what needs to happen. He does a do first. And then he's going to actually pop that into Airtable. And the tasks that need to happen will go into Airtable as either stuff you need to do today or things that are scheduled. And so that once that day is done, they've actually got a track in Airtable that he can go back and look at. So if he's not at work or someone else isn't at work, if they found something that's scheduled, they can go into Airtable and see what that is. So every day is a new blank piece of paper, but everything is captured. So they actually can go back and see what they've done. They can see what needs to be done. And everybody has access to the information using the Airtable app, which I loved. I thought that's a really cool way of bringing the online stuff, but the tangibility of writing. Because, you know, I love that idea of when you physically write it down, it makes a neural, neural pathway connection around from what you need to do to, to the action. And so that's why I love the writing of it down. But yeah, definitely having a way to connect that with an app would be pretty cool. Yeah, I love it. Mm. I just um, bought an app, you know, it's App Sumo Day or yeah. App Sumo Special, whatever at the moment. I just spent a crazy amount of money last night on a whole bunch of Sumo though. <laughs> <laughs> but one of them is an app making um, platform, which is exciting because I've had an app on the boil for probably seven years that I've never managed to bring to fruition so who knows it might be the platform for me but um Ooh, I might have to have a look at App Sumo there's an app, an app making platform I might yeah I'll it. send you the list of what I bought it's, oh um, God, it's one amazing. in particular honey and I were doing literal happy dances last night we're so excited about it it's going to be woo, a game if changer someone, if people don't know what we're talking about App Sumo is and there's no affiliation, there's no, you know, but we love this place. It's where you go to find cool new technology that actually helps support your business, low cost, entry level stuff that allows you to actually build productivity and find new and better ways of working. So, and it, and it's really, they're, they're low cost. So it's, they're nice little trials. It allows you to say, oh, I'm going to have a play with that and see what that looks like. Yeah, for me, the, the big thing about AppSumo is it's not, they're not there. They're there for a good time, not a long time. Yeah. So if you find something there, for example, if something that I bought last night was like 300 and something dollars, which seems like quite a lot, but actually I will have, if I hadn't gone with buying it like that for a lifetime purchase, yep. my other option was this, the size that I needed it for was going to be $199 a month ongoing. Yep. So look how quickly I've actually paid off that, that amount. Exactly. And I've yeah. done that with so many of the, of the tools that we use now, because it's, it's about finding the, the easiest, quicker way of doing it. And I'm going to leave, this is the, actually because I know we're running out of time, but one of the, I said this week has been all about abundance quotes from Effortless. Um, what I love, the question that is that they always, that he talks about asking is to make things easier is ask, how have I made this more difficult than it needs to be? And yes. I was like, I love that question because again, scarcity, if we're in a scarcity mindset, we try to make things hard because we think things need to be hard or we assume or we make an assumption that things are, it's got to be a hard thing to do. But sometimes some of the hardest things are actually the easiest things we need to do. So I love that question is how have I made this harder than it needs to be actually helps you change that perspective and say, is there, an, it's not saying, is there an easier way to do it? Because my response goes, well, if there is, I would have found it, wouldn't I? But if we ask how we made it harder, it makes us start to strip back those things and actually give us lightness in what we do. That is my love. Sumo does. Yeah. AppSumo helps us do things easier. 
Yes, absolutely. Yes. So good, Jenny. How have I made it harder than it needs to be? I love it. I love it. I'm going to ponder that one as I go about my day and the rest of the year. In fact, I think that's a, a brilliant one. So thanks for sharing that. That's great. This book sounds amazing. It is. It's actually one of it's I've been I, I normally take a long time to read or listen to um audio audibles because I listen to audibles because I'm moving around and I I smashed this book out in like two days every single second I was in the car it was on because I just it's everything it's it's pretty much my philosophy of how I approach my business and how I talk to my clients in a beautiful book and so I was like yes 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 just really beautifully eloquently written Jenny, I'm so glad that you just said that you listened to it because you so often talk about books that you're reading and I'm like, where do you get the time to read all these books? Because when I read a book, I fall asleep. Yeah. It's just not enough time in my... Oh, they're audibles. I, I read it because I actually, I visualise as I'm reading, which is why sometimes in the car is a bit challenging. Um, but I do <laughs> visualise the notes and I do take some notes down when I, if I'm listening to it, particularly I'll... I'll, I'll um, depending on where I am, I'll actually stop and tell Siri to make a little note uh, about a particular chapter or something. So I'll be like, hey, Siri, make a note about page 56 or chapter seven, blah, 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 so that then I have little notes from the book. So if I want to go back, I know where it was because you can't bookmark and touch the phone as you're driving. So that's how I actually create notes while I'm driving about books that I'm listening to. That's so great. But do you actually go back to them? Because I use the notes app on my phone. There's probably thousands of notes in there and I never really go back and look for them unless I've something comes to mind. I'm like, oh, I know I put it in notes and then it's hard to find it. So I do it straight away. So this book, because I've been reading this book and I've been, you know, I drove, I've been going to visit workshops and going down to the Gold Coast and stuff this week. So I've actually, when I get there, I actually make my notes in that. But I actually have a tab in Airtable that's called Random Thoughts by Jenny. So in one of my Airtables, there's a tab that is my random thoughts. So that's where I actually capture this information so that if I'm wanting inspiration about something, I actually go to my random thoughts and I can actually see the notes that I've taken. It's how Brilliant. I, get- I love it. Yeah. Thanks for that top tip. You and I are both huge fans of Airtable. I know. <laughs> my daily, my daily platform that I use the most. Oh, hundred percent. Sh- We've tried so many others and we just keep coming back to this one because it allows us to do so very much. It allows you to customize it. There's so few restrictions on what you can do in it that you can actually have freedom and flexibility to create a space that you can work in. Um, they actually have on Airtable, there is actually an Eisenhower Matrix template. I was about Airtable. to say you should create one for Airtable. Airtable. There is already one. It's not the it's it's okay. It's I could probably it, it could be better, but there is already one in there. So there's actually opportunities for you to use these tools to be so much more productive and again to give you the full full life and freedom to kind of show up where you want to without having the overwhelm, which is what you and I are all about in all the systems that we do. Brilliant. I love it. Thank you, Jenny. Magic, magic. Well, so awesome to connect with you again. It's my favorite day of the week. So tell everyone, Jenny, how can they connect with you? So easiest way to connect with me is through Facebook or Instagram at Elephant in the Room AU. Um, That's where I like to hang out. I do love my Insta place a lot. Um, Or you can catch me on my website, eitrconsulting.com, just for information and to see what we offer. Awesome. Thank you. And how about you, Kylie? Where do people find you? Hello media.team website, Facebook, Instagram, et cetera, et cetera, YouTube. So um, yeah, come and join our Facebook group and hang out. Cool. And, and, All right. and, and check out, if you haven't checked out Kylie's blogs and you're watching this and you haven't yet, I don't know why not go and check them out because every week you share such a great tip on something to do with digital marketing or business, business and marketing. So definitely really great tips that we need to connect with every week. Thank you. And my dirty little secret is that there's about, or 15 blogs unpublished sitting there in the background that um, are just needing a little quick tweak or whatever. So that's my new focus is not letting things. That's absurd. that's why next week's such a perfect topic. When is enough enough? Stop yeah. the tweaking and Stop just tweaking. get it out there. Well, yeah. the, the famous words from Reid Hoffman, who does it, we'll finish with this, if that's all right, is Reid Hoffman, who's the one of the co-founders of PayPal says, if your product is perfect when you, when you ship it, you shipped it too late. Yeah, that's such a good one, isn't it? Such a good one. And speaking of PayPal, my goodness. So now I was just reading that not only are PayPal doing an afterpay, but also Combank's doing an afterpay. Apple's doing an afterpay. It's like, whoa, things are getting crazy. 
it's gone a bit there's so many options now for people in terms of being able to connect with people online i think it's a recognition of how many people are online and how people like to purchase and it reduces the buying decision because i'm only doing a buying decision that's maybe under 20 dollars or under 50 dollars instead of the 80 100 or 200 dollars purchase so the buying decision changes so much more, and it's so much more easy to get connected with your clients when you're doing you know those kind of payment systems indeed so on the topic of scarcity and abundance get out there and start utilizing your all the opportunities that you have pretty now. much cool. you have thanks, Jenny. thanks everybody for watching i called you brenny that was that was funny thanks jenny and uh i look forward to seeing you next friday for when is enough enough have a great week everyone. <laughs> you too thanks thanks everyone for joining us bye